Thank you for watching this solving video, day six. All right, so in order to solve something like that, in class we talked about solving using um, a cross multiplication method. In this case, we can't use that cross multiply method because, oops, sorry. In order to use the cross multiplying method, we need to have one fraction equal to another fraction, right? And then we could say, okay, multiply here, and we set that equal to whatever the product is right here, and then we can solve for x. Now in this case, notice we don't have a fraction equal to another fraction. So we want to use a different kind of method in this situation. Um, our first step here, we want to identify restrictions. So first check and see, is there any any variables, are, sorry, are there any variables in the denominator that we need to restrict? Uh, no, you're right, there, there are not any denominators, um, variables in our denominator, so we don't need to restrict any values. So our next step, so step one is restrict values. Our second step is we want to look at what is the lowest common multiple. Uh, we want to look at those denominators and say, okay, well, what what is the lowest common multiple of all of the denominators? Here we have a denominator of 1. So if I list those three out, I say, okay, here's my denominator of 1, here's the denominator of another, and here's the denominator of another. All right, so I have a factor of 3, I need a factor of 5, which doesn't match the 3, and I have a factor of 1. So in order to accommodate all of those, we need a 3 factor, a 5 factor, and a 1 factor. The 1 doesn't really matter. So really it's just the lowest common multiple is 15. So this is a little, solving is a little different than all the other stuff we've been doing in the sense that now we have two sides to our equation. Right now we have an equation instead of an expression, whereas all the other ones didn't have this right here and just said, okay, subtract these two things. But now we have two sides, right? Now we have this balance beam that's saying everything on this side is equal to everything on this side. So we can do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So if I have k plus 1 over 3, notice I'm leaving a little space here. Minus, oops, minus k over 5 equals Three. And I'm just going to write 3 instead of 3 over 1. Alright. So I just rewrote everything I had up there. That's just 3 over 1. And I want to do the same thing to both sides. So what I want to do to both sides is I want to multiply both sides by the LCM. By the lowest common multiple. All right, so when I multiply both sides by the LCM, I'm going to multiply everything on this side times my LCM, which is 15, but I'm actually going to write it 5 times 3. I'm going to leave it in its factored form, right? Same thing, 15, 5 times 3. And I'm going to multiply everything on this side times 5 times 3. All right, I left it factored for a reason. If I distribute this in, it's going to go to both places. Right? It's going to distribute to both piece, uh, terms there. So I have 5 times 3 times k plus 1 over 3. Right? So this is multiplying my numerator. Now, something happens here. 3 divided by 3 simplify to just be 1. All right, and then we have minus 5 times 3 times k over 5, right? So I have my 5 times 3 here, my 5 times 3 here. In this case, the 5's cancel out. So since I already had a 5 here, they simplify, and the only thing really that ends up multiplying is the 3, because the 5's simplify. All right, and then we've got equals 5 times 3, 15 times 3 is 45. All right, so let's look at what just happened. Because I multiplied by the LCM, it contained the denominator here. It also contained the denominator here. So it it basically got rid of my fractions. So now I've got what's remaining is 5 
times k plus 1 minus 3k is that 5 divided by 5 is 1 equals 45 alright we're almost done now it's looking more like an algebra 1 problem distribute this 5 5k plus 5 minus 3k equals 45 combine like terms 2k plus 5 equals 45 subtract 5 and I know what k is now k equals 20 now I want to double check and see are there any restrictions uh, did I have any restrictions nope I didn't alright so I don't have to restrict any values but I want to check does k work so let's try 20 plus 1 is 21 21 divided by 3 is 7 minus 20 divided by 5 is 4 7 minus 4 equals 3 is that a true statement yes it is so I have just checked and I know 100% before I even turn this paper in to my teacher <laughs> that, that I got the answer correct all right or before I upload this video I know I got it correct and I didn't make any mistakes so our our goal or our steps were we wanted to restrict restrict any values in the denominator because we don't want the world to end right denominator nom or cannot equal zero we want to identify the lowest common multiple we want to multiply both sides by that lowest common multiple in order to annihilate the denominator all right so our denominators end up simplifying out all right let's try another one all right, I actually want you guys to try this on your own. It's very similar to the one we just did. So I'd like you to hit pause, try this, and then check your answer. See if you can get some feedback. All right, hit pause now. All right, so hopefully you've already got the answer, but I just wanted to stop halfway and make sure that we've got this step correct. So our lowest common multiple would be 4 times 3 or 12. We multiply it to both sides. Now here's my equal sign. And I'm multiplying it on both sides, but it distributes to both pieces here. So I just have it multiplied to each piece. All right, so make sure if you haven't gotten this um, any further than this, I want you to hit pause, see if you can go from here. All right, so your final answer should be x equals 12. You want to check your work, write down any questions you have for me. But notice, again, our, our denominator simplifies. And that 3 distributes here. Our denominator simplifies out. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and we're left with 4x. And then we just do algebra 1. And then over here, this is my checking my work. I plug that 12 back in right here and here, anywhere I saw an x, and check to make sure that made a, a true statement. And 2 plus 4 does equal 6. All right. So um, this is just one little step. Um, getting just slightly more complicated. Uh, we want to look at our denominators. Here is divided by 1. I don't really need to worry about that. Actually, it's pretty pretty easy to see that, well, my lowest common multiple is x minus 3. So one of the factors is x minus 3. I have a 1, and I have an x minus 3. I don't really need to worry about the 1. x minus 3 is my lowest common multiple. So I'm going to multiply through by that. Oh, what did I forget? Hopefully you're, you're sitting there saying, Miss McSorley, you forgot. You forgot to put your restrictions. <laughs> All right. What are the restrictions? We are not allowed to let x equal 3. Good. All right. So we can't let x equal 3. And this is our lowest common multiple. So let's multiply both, both sides. I'm going to do a little color, color coding here. Alright, so I'm going to multiply, I have an equal sign here, x minus 3 times 4x over x minus 3 equals times 2 plus times 12 over x minus 3. Woo! Let me put some parentheses, make sure this isn't so confusing. Okay, so if you notice what's in blue, 
The blue is basically this equation stretched out. The first part, term, the equal sign, the two, the plus sign, and the last term. All right, and then I multiplied both sides times x minus 3. Now, why do I see it two times over here and only one time over here? If I had a star plus a, a square and I multiplied it by heart, that heart is going to go to both places, right? So even though I multiplied it on this side once, it actually distributed and became multiplied to each piece because there was a sum. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this out. Oh, this is so fun. You ready? Here we go. This crosses this out, and we're left with 4x. And here we distribute, and this simplifies with that, and we get 12. Ooh, we're almost done. Minus 2x, we get 2x equals 12 minus 6 is 6, divide by 2, and x equals 3. Yay! I have my answer, right? I'm done. All right, next problem. You, you have any issues with that? What did I forget to do? What's my last step? Step 1, restrictions. Step 2, find the lowest common multiple. Step 3, multiply through by that lowest common multiple, right? So LCM on both sides. Um, what's my last step? What do I really need to do very last step? I need to check and see. Check my, my answer and check and make sure it doesn't uh, conflict with my restrictions. So if I look up here, wait, I'm not allowed to let x equal 3, but wait a second, x equals 3. And that's the only solution I got. So if I let equals x equals 3, then 3 minus 3 is 0, and then the world is going to end. So there are no solutions to this problem. Because if there was a solution, the world would end. And we don't want that to happen. So, no solutions. All right. I think, is this the last one? Okay. I've got one more to show, to do with you, and then one I want you to do by yourself. So, let's try purple. We need to find our restrictions. Restrictions are easier to find when things are in factored form. I'd like to factor this first. So I've got 2m over m minus 1 plus m minus, oops, m minus 5 over. So m squared minus 1, I see this is a difference of two perfect squares, m minus 1 times m plus 1. And that equals 1. All right. Let's make this two prettier. There we go. Great. So I can identify my restrictions. M is not allowed to equal 1 or negative 1. M is not allowed to equal 1 uh, or negative 1. All right. So I want to find my lowest common multiple. I want to list out all my denominators. I've got M minus 1 is one of my denominators. I've got uh, M minus 1 times m plus 1, and I've got 1 over here, divided by 1. So I don't really need to worry about that divided by 1. My lowest common multiple needs to include one of these and one of these. So m plus 1 and m minus 1 is my lowest common multiple. And I'm just going to leave it in factored form. It's easier for me to see and cross things off if it's just left in factored form. So we're going to multiply. We're going to do this a little differently, not too much differently. So I've got, actually here, let me make life easier. Oops. Um, maybe here. Let's take a picture. Where is it? There. No. Where'd it go? It's hiding. Hold on. I'll find it. Okay. I found it. It was hiding. All right. So I just copied that, put it down here so we can reach a little better. So I need to multiply both sides, right? When we're talking about sides, we have an equal sign. 
going to multiply both sides by my LCM. So I'm going to multiply this one times m minus 1 and m plus 1. I multiply it on that side. When I multiply on this side, it distributes to both pieces. So I'm going to multiply this one times m minus 1 and m plus 1. I'm going to multiply this times m minus 1 and m plus 1. You notice how I did it just slightly different, but I'm multiplying each piece times m minus 1, m plus 1, our LCM, right? This is our LC, oh, that's supposed to be pink, LCM, LCM, LCM. All right, now, what happens over here? I have m minus 1 and m minus 1 factors that cancel out. What's left is this. but our denominator disappeared. So multiplying by the LCM will cancel out my denominator, and that's my goal. It'll help me solve and get rid of fractions. So I have m minus 1, m minus 1, simplify. m plus 1, m plus 1, simplify. But I still am left with m minus 5. And then here, nothing simplifies. There's no denominator, so it's just m squared squared, well, uh, I'm just going to write m squared minus 1, because I know that that really is m times m, uh, distributive property, all that wonderful stuff, right here, right here, there we go. Okay, so m squared minus 1. Now we just do our algebra 1 stuff. 2m squared plus 2m plus m minus 5 equals m squared minus 1. All right. Combine my like terms. Now, it looks like we've got an m squared, so we're probably going to have to factor here. So we want to get one side equal to 0. Oh, we got 3. We have 3 m's. I'm going to subtract m squared. And I'm left with 1 m squared. A positive 3 m. And I'm going to add 1 and get minus 4. Once we've got one side equal to 0, we can factor. And I'm thinking, OK, 4 times 1 equals 4. And I can get 3 from 4 and 1. In order for it to be a positive 3, I need a positive 4 and a negative 1. My solutions are m equals negative 4 and m equals positive 1. But am I sure? Do I know those are my answers for sure, for sure? Am I done? Have I checked it? Not yet. I want to check. Because up here, I have some restrictions. m is not allowed to equal 1. Ah, it's not allowed to equal 1. All right, so I'm not allowed to let that equal 1. Because if I plug in 1 minus 1, I'm now dividing by 0, and the world ends. OK, don't let the world end. Save the world. Here we go. This would be my only answer. I would want to check it, so multiply it in 2 times negative 4, negative 4 minus 1 negative 4 minus 5, and negative 4 squared would be positive 16. 16 minus 1 is 16 minus 1 is 15 equals 1. OK, let's see. Does this work? It looks like I would need to multiply this by uh, 3 over 3, maybe? Let's try. 3 over 3. Neg oh, no, no, wait. Negative 1. Oh my goodness. Negative 15 over. All right, something went wrong. What did I do? 2, negative 4. All right, hold on. All right, we're going to try something a little different. Not, not too different. I'm just going to back up a few steps. Instead of plugging this into All right. What I'm going to do? Oh no, stop. No. <laughs> okay. We are crossing off m equals 1. So if I plug in a negative 4 into this, into the factored form, it'll probably be a little simpler to see. So let's try negative 4. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 over negative 5 plus negative 4 plus negative 5 is negative 9 over. And negative 4 minus 1 is a negative 5. And negative 4 plus 1 is a negative 3. 
and we get oops all right right so we have negative 9 over 15 and we've got I want to get this over 15 so I'm going to multiply by a negative 3 over negative 3 and I get 24 over 15 if I add these up 24 minus 9 is 15 so we have 15 over 15 equals 1 okay 15 over 15 equals 1 I've checked my work I agree this is an answer that one is not all right um, I have one more problem for you try this one I want you to identify the LCM and we will practice some more tomorrow a bunch of solving um, we're gonna be doing the book work in class so if you want to get a head start on that you're welcome to all right thank you for watching